Okay, so I'm a pasta lover. The problem with pasta, though, is it's a carb. And eating carbs all the time, it's not that great. No. So I discovered a while back spaghetti squash, which is squash, but when you cook it, it acts like spaghetti, and you can treat it like spaghetti. So you can dress it with tomato sauce or with Parmesan and olive oil or however you want to, like you would do spaghetti, but it's a lot healthier for you because it's a vegetable and it's not a carb. So the way to prepare spaghetti squash, and I'm terrified of doing this right now, but you have to cut it in half and then you bake it so that it gets really stringy and pulpy, and then you can pull the pulp out of it to make it look like spaghetti. So let's see if we can cut this thing. Mm. Oh, geez. Yeah, I'm gonna need a bigger knife for this. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a, a strong man as well. Yeah, we didn't think about that part of it. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do, actually? Okay, so here's, here's an interesting here's idea. Here's my tip. So, tried to cut the spaghetti squash, can't do it. If you can't cut your squash in half, what you can do is pierce it all over and cook it in the oven whole, and then when it comes out, it'll be moist enough that you can slice it. Easier so that's out. what we're gonna do. So excuse me while I stab this spaghetti <laughs> squash. It's getting out all your aggression. <laughs> right? It's a workout too. Exactly, and while I do that, if you wanna line that Pyrex pan there with some tin foil, that way we can cook it. So I'm just gonna pierce this all over and it'll help let the moisture in and out of it while it's cooking. So you really wanna make sure that you've punctured the spaghetti squash all over. You know, don't miss any parts of it. Make sure the whole thing is nice and sliced up. Nice. A lot of stab yeah. wounds in there. And then once you've done that, you can just take the whole thing, stick it in a pan, and stick it in the oven 350 for about a half an hour, and it should be nice and soft. That's great. So the spaghetti squash that we're going to be making is sort of a Greek pasta salad, if you will, except yeah. for the spaghetti squash. So what we're going to add to it are uh, grape tomatoes, and I prefer the orange ones over the red ones. I just think they have a better taste to me, but you can do whatever color you want. Actually, they make those um, cool little mixtures with kumados and red and orange and yellow and heirloom baby tomatoes, whatever you feel like doing. Um, we'll also do black olives, and I know a lot of people have an aversion to olives, but I happen to like I them. I love them. So we'll do black olives, and then we'll also add feta cheese and some basil as well. All right, so now that we've combined the tomatoes and the olives, we're going to add basil, and we're going to do this technique called chiffonade where you take all of your basil leaves that you've pulled off of the stems and you pack them tightly together and roll them up and then you start slicing them and they come out in little strips. So you just keep going and slice down the whole leaf and you'll end up with little strips of basil that make it much easier to eat and it's also much easier to cut it as well. And then once it's all cut, we'll add it to the bowl. All right, so the spaghetti squash has been cooked. When you feel it, it's very warm because we just took it out of the oven, but you can feel that it's sort of Soft. softer. Right, so what we're gonna do is, and I think it's best to use a serrated knife, and we're just going to cut it in half completely. You can, see you can the feel the heat. Steam coming out of there too, right? It smells so good. Yeah, oopsies are going flying. And when you open it up, what you're going to find is the inside is going to have, the whole middle is going to be filled with seeds, and then you're going to see these spaghetti-looking strands. You're so smart. <laughs> All right, so here's another entertaining trick I learned. I take the garbage bag and put one end in the drawer and shut it so that it's hanging here. Because what we're going to do is take a fork and scrape out the inside and the middle because you want to make sure you get rid of all these seeds that are in there and you don't need them so we just throw them in the trash. Sure, let's grab another fork and be careful because it's very warm. Here's a up bench for that. And when you're pulling these out, you're probably going to think to yourself, oh my, I'm grabbing a lot of the pulp of this and I don't want to do that. Trust me, there's so much in each side of these uh, spaghetti squashes that 
it, it doesn't even matter if you take some of the pulp with you. And you just want to make sure you clean it out completely because the worst thing would be to eat a seed, especially if you're serving this to guests. <laughs> faster than I did. Maybe mine were easier. Now I'm being picky. Keep getting hit in the clumps. Yeah, the good news is that the seeds are very large, so if you happen to miss one, you'll you won't you won't miss it in the food. <laughs> Alright, so then once you've taken all the seeds out, you can sort of just scrape along the sides with the fork to pull all the pulp away from the rim of the squash. It's amazing how much there is. Yeah, it really and truly, there's, it, it's, you can get a, you know, for a family of four, you could eat one of these easily. And once it's all pulled away, we will bring over our bowl of ingredients and we've added the feta here and mixed it all together. And we can just take the spaghetti squash just use the fork to scrape it right into that bowl. It's really warm. Here, I'll grab that one. All right. So these rinds are pretty tough. I would not recommend putting these down in garbage disposal. I would just toss them. Yeah. So we can combine the squash with all the rest of the ingredients. Once everything is mixed up, we'll dress it. And this is where you can get creative and do whatever you want. I would recommend a little bit of olive oil. I tend to be heavy handed, but I'll try and see. I always just, I just go for it. But if you don't like a lot, you know, you can just drizzle it. Garlic salt, of course, I put this on everything. And remember, you're going to mix it in, so it might look like you're putting a lot on the top, but you're going to mix it through. And then we'll be a little spicy, put some crushed Spice red pepper. It up a little bit. Yeah. And you can go ahead and put whatever you want on there. Don't forget there's also basil in there already, which will give it a really nice flavor as well. So now that it's all mixed together, flying tomatoes. <laughs> We can uh, grab our forks and get a taste of it and see, yeah. how, see how it is. I want to make sure I get all the veggies on there. Mm. Good? So good. 